Okay. Um, so, uh, so for let me share my screen first. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Uh, so we're going to be uh, starting the this session, uh, like the first session with uh, using AI and co-pilots to develop uh, product specifications. For this week, you're going to be uh, like uh, developing your uh, product specification and we're going to be looking at how AI and co-pilots are going to be helping us with that. So uh, the way, uh, like uh, since I'm going to be on the other uh, tab, I might not be able to uh, like uh, see your comments or uh, look at your uh, questions in the comments. So make sure to raise your hands or to just uh, speak up uh, so that I can uh, get my attention to you guys and answer the question or any anything that's not clear. Okay, so let me start uh, the session there. Okay, so let's start with uh, what AI is and what copilots are and some examples of these copilots. So uh, like this is just a very, very small uh, introduction to AI. Uh, I have included some uh, brief and uh, some really good resources at the end. So you, you guys can uh, go ahead and read those for more information. But AI in general are, uh, AIs are in general uh, machines designed to simulate human intelligence processes. So these are applications learn, uh, like, like that include learning, reasoning, uh, problem solving, uh, like perception uh, and language understanding. So what do you even like? AI is a large and vast uh, like field. Uh, it's not only like limited to uh, LLMs. LLMs are large language models such as uh, like ChatGPT, uh, like uh, Gemini. You know, kind of say uh, meta AI and so on. These are called LLMs because they are trained on a large, not a large data set, and they are, uh, they are called large language models. But it's not only limited to that. So it's it's application that include learning, reasoning, like problems uh, solving, uh, perceptions, uh, and language understanding. So it's a big topic AI. Uh, and we're going to be seeing how we can utilize this uh, AI and co-pilots in order to help us with our uh, like tasks uh, and our uh, workflows uh, as project ma managers and as well as uh, any other fields. So what are co-pilots? So uh, they are just AI-powered assistants, uh, assistants that enhance productivity. So these are specified for some use cases. Uh, for instance, you can see uh, the GitHub Copilot. So the GitHub Copilot is uh, a copilot that's made to assist the user in coding. So this is specifically for coding. It's not there for uh, like uh, writing a poem uh, or writing a summary on a, like a book or anything. So these are when an AI uh, called assistant that's, uh, you know, that enhances productivity for a specific task is uh, we can consider it as AI co-pilots. So it helps automate like automate tasks, uh, provide insights and enhance uh, productivity. So we do have some examples here. So one of the like the most widely known uh, AI tool uh, is uh, ChatGPT. So that's what we're, we're going to be using for this session for uh, at least most of uh, the demos. Uh, so uh, like I have included that the link that you can uh, use to get to ChatGPT. So the first thing that you do when you uh, like when uh, you open the link is you're gonna be asked to sign in. So I'm gonna be uh, gonna log in to my account. So I already have an account. If you don't, it's uh, it's not that much hard. So what I do is I use uh, continue with Google. So that it's easier to continue. So I just choose my email that I want to use. And then boom, yeah, really. So uh, that's how you can uh, use it. So we will, uh, of course, uh, get it into deeper demos in later sessions. I mean, in later, in later slides. Uh, so that's one. And not, notebook LM, 
which is also included in the uh, in this week's uh, challenge document is is basically uh, like built with Gemini uh, 1.5, which is uh, an LLM uh, developed by Google. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at uh, how we, we can uh, use that as well. So it's just there. Uh, what's different from uh, what makes it uh, different is uh, you provided uh, like uh, context or books or sites with which and other things, and it's going to be able to extract things from there. So I, I, I like uh, since uh, my I'm using Chrome and I have already lo logged in by using my uh, Google account. It's automatically logged in, so you can create a new. Uh, notebook and here you can uh, like uh, share or uh, copy and paste the website that you want to like see so for instance you can just uh, take this but since it is not shared for everyone it might not uh, receive it but so yeah it's not going to uh, allow it but we can i think we can do uh, Yep, let's just take an example website. So here we have a website. Um, so I'm going to copy it and paste it here. So I'm going to insert it. So it's going to insert it here. Uh, so it's a viable uh, uh, link. So it's going to insert it here. So here we can ask some, these are just the suggested questions, but we can ask uh, uh, like, Okay, what was it? How to use AI, like LMMs. So it's going to refer to this uh, website and it's going to take the contents from it and it's going to uh, write what I have asked it. So write a 200 word summary about how to use LLM. So it's going to uh, just give me the content, uh, give, give me the summary by using the context, which is the website as a context. So that's not notebook LLM. So that's how you can add. So if you want to add multiple resources, so you just uh, click here and add, uh, like you, you can add websites, YouTube's uh, like from your uh, drive, you, you can add uh, Google Docs slides. Earlier, we tried to add slides, so you can do it from here. So yeah, so you can insert it and ask whatever you want from it. So that's how you can uh, use uh, the notebook LMs. Uh, okay. Moving on, so this is uh, just the copilot that I wanted to show you. So, uh, so this is uh, called uh, the GitHub copilot. So it's used uh, like to help you with your code. It can write code. It can uh, like write unit tests. Uh, it can write functions, and it can help you debug it and uh, a lot more. So this is more of uh, like uh, a copilot that's specifically built for assist thinking uh, coding specifically so uh yeah so any questions so far guys uh is it clear just to check up on you guys um, if it is clear you can show me some thumbs up and if it's not clear you can ask um am i moving too fast or uh, like i do, do you like the pace okay um i'm going to pick that as a yes but like if hello yes yes uh, yes I... yeah it's it's a little bit fast but uh, it's okay i think okay. Uh, if we get if we get the video recording it's not a big issue we can yes it up. yes Yes, it's being recorded, but uh, if there is anything that's not clear, uh, please make sure to stop me and ask so that we can go through it again. Okay. 
Thank you so much, Masai, for your uh, comment. Okay, uh, so let's move to specifically this week's or this session's key topic, which is uh, product specification. So what's product specification? So product specification in short is a detailed document that outlines the requirement, what's required, like the features and the functionalities of a product. So you have a product, so uh, like the document that uh, has or that includes the requirement, the features, uh, the functionalities and so on are, is called uh, product specification. So it's very, it's a very important uh, document because uh, it's, it aligns uh, like the understanding of the stakeholders and the producers, uh, you can say. So it ensures that everyone is on board and have a common understanding. Uh, and it uh, provides a roadmap or a guideline for the developers and the designers so they know what they are aiming for, what they are designing, and what they are de developing. And it sets a clear expectation for what's expected to be delivered, and it meets the customer's expectation and ma market needs or demand. So what this means is, before you uh, like you write or you specify your uh, product or you uh, like draft your product specification, you need to do market research, right? So during your during this step, which is the market research, you're gonna be asking the customers or you're gonna be checking uh, like uh, what's working, what's not working, what to do and what not to do, and what the market needs and what the market hits and, and so on, right? So. Uh, by having a product specification, uh, you're going to be expecting, uh, so the, like uh, outlining the customer's expectation and the market needs is more of a uh, market research. So during your market research, you're going to be outlining what to do and what not to do. So which is going to be, uh, which is going to set a clear expectation of what to deliver, right? So uh, it's it also could uh like serve as a definition, a definition of them so what is going to be considered then and so on and for the risk mitigation it, it identifies potential issues early in the development process so especially with the uh like inputs uh the raw materials and so on so you you, you already know what you need and you already know what's in the market and what's not in the market so you can like uh, priorly uh, prior to the development you might you, you will know for, for, like what are the, the potential issues that might arise uh, during the development process so the benefits of having uh, product specification is clear uh, communication between the teams so it's clear it's it sets a clear roadmap and expectation of what needs to be delivered and what we are we as a team are working towards and it reduces the development error and misunderstanding because it's uh, as i've said it's a clear roadmap and it facilitates effective project planning and resource allocation so before moving on to how we can develop uh, this product specification let's talk about prompts so prompts are a means of communicating with ai or llm so you, you can call it LLM. So from now on, we are going to call, call it LLM because we're going to be working with LLMs, which is short for uh, large language models. Right? So this includes uh, ChatGPT, Meta AI, uh, Jasper, uh, like uh, Gemini, and so on. Right. So uh, so prompts is an, an input or a question or a command. You you, you can call it. Uh, you provide to an AI model or to the LLM to generate a response. So uh, what's it's the means of your communication with the LLM tool or the AI in short, right? So there are like, I have outlined three uh, like major or uh, main types of prompts here and along with uh, an example. So the first one is uh, open-ended questions, which encourage detailed response so it's not limiting you're not limiting the LLM to a certain thing so it's just an open question and the LLM is going to respond with it so here we have an example so we can check the examples here 
Um, so I'm going to be sharing the slides so you you guys uh, will be able to check it as well. So here, I just asked it uh, uh, to explain the benefits of eco-friendly uh, uh, like consumer products. So it's going to uh, in detail uh, like answer or respond with details about uh, like deals eco-friendly uh, consumer products here. So you, you can uh, go straight and read uh, if you like. And when, but when I ask it for specific instruction or make it somehow uh, closed in questions, such as list five features of a smart water bo bottle, uh, it's going to answer, it's going to be restricted for answering just five uh, main features of a water, like a smart water bottle. Right, so here you, you can see it's just answered in five, but if I ask it in three, it, it should answer in three. So this is more of uh, uh, like a closed end or a specific uh, type of question, right? So uh, like mo moving on to the third, we have a context joy problem. So I, I really do urge uh, you guys to try this out, uh, like to try this one out whenever you are using an LLM, it's just uh, providing a background for better response. So here I'm uh, like giving it a a context or a background as a market analyst. So the LLM is going to act as a market analyst, and the answer is going to be uh, giving me is going to be more uh, uh, more closely related or more close to the answers of a market analyst. So here I'm going, I'm giving it a personal name for some, or I'm giving it uh, like a threat, right? So, so he or like it is a market analyst and I'm asking it to draft a product specification for a new smart water bottle, right? So here it's going to answer uh, in a more specific way that's more, uh, more re residing uh, to the market, uh, like uh, to the marketer, uh, point of view, right? So here, uh, product specification, like the next generation uh, smart water bottle. So th this is the answer itself is more closely related to uh, a market, right? like a marketing, right? Uh, so uh, so I, I already gave it uh, like this, uh, like a context, so it's going to answer that. So this knowing these things is very 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 important because uh, prompts are what we use to communicate with the LLMs or the AI. So the quality of the AI's response depends on how well you communicate your requests. So the more specific your question, or the more specific or the more clear your prompt is, the more uh, the better. Uh, response you're gonna get with from the AI. So clear and specific prompts lead to a more accurate and uh, useful answer. So make sure to when you are writing a prompt, make sure to make it as detailed as possible, and to give it a context uh, and to specify what you need uh, in the prompt. So we do have uh, many many more uh, demos or examples here, but before we move on to that. Uh, are there any answer questions, guys? So far, how is it going? Uh, is everything good? Is everything clear uh, about prompt special? Because uh, we need to be we need to be on the same page on this one. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, maybe two more. Uh, uh, any questions? Okay. okay, I'm going to take that as, uh, uh, as it's clear. So let's see some uh, examples. So AI or LLM is system rely uh, heavily on the quality of prompts uh, to deliver a meaningful and accurate response. A well-structured prompt is key uh, to generate relevant response. So here I have uh, like used two different prompts to generate two different things. Uh, one is more specific and the other is more just generic, right? So here I have just asked it to uh, explain the advantage 
uh, of AI in uh, healthcare in two sentences. So it's just going to uh, AI is in, in healthcare in ancestral diagnosis by analyzing like get acid to detect patterns and enable uh, early detection of personalized treatment plans. So that's one sentence, and it also improves operational efficiency through automation reducing the burden. Uh, I think. Yeah, in, uh, it's in far. Yeah. So uh, it could really like uh, so automation reducing the burden of healthcare professionals and improving client outcome. So this is just a, a two sentence uh, explanation of the advantage of AI in healthcare. But here I have asked it to list the top five benefits of using renewable energy. So this is more specific and this is more this is more detailed uh, asking for. I specifically asked it for the top five, and uh, I already asked it for uh, a list and uh, what I want. So about it's about renewable energies. So here is going to specify the top five benefits along with the uh, use cases or the definitions, right? So the more specific and direct the prompt is, the more focused and accurate the chat GPT or the LLM's response will be. So that's what we can uh, get from this example, right? So the next thing, key thing that I want to highlight is comparing results across different platforms. So here I have included uh, three platforms. So the first one is Gemini, the second one is ChatGPT, and the third one is uh, Perplexity. So I'm going to be using the same prompt on uh, all these three platforms, and we will see uh, how different the response is. Uh, but before that, let me explain why we can ex expect uh, different response. So AI or LLM is just basically uh, a machine or uh, a system that's trained on different, uh, on a, a large, a very, very large data set. So from, a, from LLM to LLM, the data sets are very di different, right? So earlier I showed you uh, like uh, um, GitHub's copilot, right? which is a copilot that's used uh, in uh, to assist the user in coding, right? So that copilot or that LLM that that AI tool is specifically trained on codes, right? Or repositories of users and uh, uh, so many codes. So it's better for it's better to use it for a code. So, so with, with that in mind, different systems or different LLMs are, diff are trained on different data sets. So, uh, this, of course, is going to uh, uh, that on, di on different data sets and optimize for unique purposes, right? So, all have a unique purpose that they are trained to do. Uh, so, the result uh, and the outcomes are going to be different, even though the same prompt uh, is gi is given for all of them. So we can take a look at each of them here. Um, let me uh, open all of them, and we can see how different they are. So in some it might be more detailed, and in some it might be less detailed. So here we have the Gemini response. So. Uh, mind you, the question is, uh, what are the main features of smart water water? Right? So here, uh, so it answered uh, water tracking and what they use. So uh, here, first it started with uh, what smart water bottle is, and the main fe features are uh, water tracking and what it does in that category is it's going to use sensors accurately measured uh, your water consumption, uh, provide real-time data of how, how much water you have dropped, right? And the second is goal setting. Uh, so it's, it, it will help you set a goal of how much water you want to drink, and progress tracking, reminders, connectivity, uh, temperature control, additional features, and so on. So here, under each feature, it has a detail of how you can do it, right? Or how it does it. So here you can see, uh, so it's more or less generic than uh, the Germany. Right? So here in Germany, it's 
uh, we have you, you have the feature and you have a detail of how it does that feature in detail, right? Uh, but here, when you come to ChatGPT, so it's it gives a very very short uh, definition at the start. At the start, and here you you can see just uh, like an introduction to the features, right? So uh, hydration tracking, reminders, connectivity. So it's basically the same thing, but the way they communicate the result is very different, right? So connectivity, we have it, uh, it under both, but here it tells us how it does it. Right, so here, but it's more of a generic uh, thing. So, but here you have, of course, uh, more features that uh, that uh, done. Uh, uh, those are li listed in Gemini. Uh, but here, when you come to privacy, uh, so uh, uh, you have a little bit of both, right? So here is, of course, it's more or less the same thing but uh, it's a bit much more uh, detailed than uh, the one provided by ChatGPT, but less detailed than the one provided by Gemini. So you can see how different uh, the responses are, even though you use the same uh, product. Right? So here also we use uh, what are the features of smart water bottle, here, of course, we use the same thing. What are the features of uh, smart water? So what you can take from this is AI systems prioritize uh, different features based on the design and the data set that they are trained on. So testing across multiple platforms ensures that you get the most out of compressing information. So if you want to just read uh, like or know uh, roughly uh, what are the main features of the water bo bottle? Uh, maybe ChatGPT could be more of your choice. But if you want to have a more more detailed uh, of these features, Gemini could be uh, your way to go. But if you are looking for something that's uh, you know like uh, in the middle, practice it could be your thing. So no, like uh, I just wanted to show you here that uh, different platforms uh, give you different responses, even though the prompt is the same. This is mainly be because the data set and the, like, the future the design is different from each other. OK, uh, here we have follow-up prompts and refining outputs. So the first, like, like we asked the first question in, in the LLM is going to provide us with answer, right, or output. But we might not uh, find output to be uh, enough uh, detailed or fully aligned with our needs, right? So we can use follow-up prompts uh, to allow the users to refine the AI's response, uh, making it in, like the interaction more dynamic and tailored to the specific impact. So here, of course, let me just uh, get rid of these things. Okay, uh, here, of course, we have a demo. Uh, so here, I'm going to start with asking it, what are the latest smart features in wearable fitness devices? So here is going to tell me uh, what are the latest smart features in the wearable device are. So, uh, uh, and then we can ask it, which of these features are more important for us? So we want to, know about uh, athletes more than just uh, so we are building this product or we are trying to build uh, or write the product specification for athletes right so here it is just uh, more of a detailed or a more of a generic answer so we can uh, by using attractive uh, prompting or uh, like refining the prompt you can see uh, you can ask it to just give you the features that are most important for athletes. So here it's going to uh, like respond with uh, heart rate vulnerability, uh, sleep monitoring, uh, clo uh, continuous glucose monitoring, dynamic workout tracking, and VO2 uh, max. Again, of course, you can ask it uh, to provide a comprehension of these features for fitness tracks versus, uh, you know, sorry, for uh, fitness trackers versus smartwatches. So here 
you wanted to compare these features across fitness trackers and smart watches right so here it's going to uh, like give you a comparison a detailed comparison between the fitness trackers and the like smart watches so here you can see how uh, it brought the output from the first response or the first output uh, and by get, by giving it iterative prompting, you can uh, get it to a specific con content right? or a specific topic, as we have done here. Uh, so we can we call this uh, follow-up prompting or refine the output. So uh, I'm I am asking it uh, without leaving the job box. I am asking it to give me more detail on uh, like things. So the key takeaway from this could be uh, follow-up prompts help clarify, expand, or narrow the AI's output, making it more relevant and insightful. Okay, here uh, as the last example uh, from prompts, uh, you can use. So this is a very very powerful uh, tool. So you can prompt uh, the LLM uh, by using prompt. You can control the output of the style, the format, even the language, and so on, right? So uh, uh, these things or the LLMs can adapt to a variety of instruction before, uh, beyond just providing information. So, uh, so far we have been just more or less uh, asking it for information, but we can specify the desired format, tone, language, you can shape uh, the outputs uh, to suit your needs. So whether it's uh, for a formal report, for a casual blog post, or to communicate in different language, you can uh, uh, like ask the LLM to do that by using prompts. So here, of course, we have a demo that we can take a look at. Uh, so let me get rid of this one. Yeah, so here I'm just uh, specifying, so I'm just asking, uh, the LLM or charge picking to summarize the benefits of renewable energy in Google Chrome. So here I'm specifying the format, right? So I'm telling the LLM that I need uh, the response to be in a bullet points uh, for format. So it's going to follow my instruction and to give me the output in a bullet uh, points. We can also ask it uh, like to write, to use uh, like a formal lib, and the format of a formal letter. So here I'm asking it to uh, write a formal letter about the importance of uh, sustainability, right? So here you can see that uh, I'm giving it, I'm specifying the, uh, I'm specifying the format to be in a formal letter. So it's going to give me uh, in that format. So here you, you can see, uh, like what I was asking for was a formal letter, so the output is in a formal letter, right? Yeah, so I can ask it to translate uh, or to answer in a different language. Here, I just asked it for to translate this word into uh, Spanish. So, the future of energy is renewable. So, I cannot speak Spanish, but uh, I just can't. I just believe it's the same thing, but you can do that as well. Right. Yeah, and lastly, you can ask it uh, to summarize. So here, uh, like I'm, give, I'm giving it two instructions. Right. So I'm the first one is I'm asking it to summarize, and the second one is I'm also specifying the tone. Right. So summarize the benefits of renewable energy in a casual tone. So whenever you're communicating your insights, or uh, whenever you're communicating your like uh, discussion with someone that tone you want to use might be different, right? So if you are communicating with your boss or someone who is like uh, on upper uh, level, you might need to use uh, more of a formal tone, right? So the tone that you use for this case could be di different. But if you are communicating with your peer, if you are communicating with your colleague, you might use, or with your friends, you might need to use a casual tone. So. You can even specify the tone, and it's going to change uh, like the output based on that uh, specification. So here is a summary of renewable energies, the benefits of renewable energies, but in a casual tone. Yeah. 
So uh, the, key, the key takeaway here is B by specifying the format, the tone, and the language, you can tailor the access modes output to suit your specific needs. So if it is uh, web, whether it is for formal documentation, a gradual uh, communication, or just uh, like uh, just to specify the content, how you, the content you want it to be delivered, you can just specify it and uh, specify it in your prompt, and the uh, AI is going to follow that. Okay. Uh, okay. This. Uh, let's just take a look at this. Uh, two uh, slides, and we can have a discussion before mo moving to the next uh, slide. So what I, I do here, we can, uh, is just the highlight of the best practices so for effective AI interaction. So the first, the first and the most important thing is being clear and specific. So when you are uh, communicating with LLM by using prompt, you have to be, or you need to be, as clear and as specific as you can uh, to get the best response from uh, the LLM. So provide a detailed instruction to get uh, the precise answer. So uh, instead of just saying, tell me about water bottles, you can ask what are the latest smart features in eco-friendly water bottles. So this is more specific and clear. So what do you want? I want the latest uh, smart features, right? So uh, uh, like of what? Uh, eco-friendly water bottles. But here on the first prompt is just about telling me about water bottles, which is a very generic question. And of course, the response that you are going to get from the LLM is going to be very, very generic. And the second one, and which I really advise you guys to try out is uh, setting the context. So this is just giving the LLM or the AI role or a persona, you, you can say. So inform the AI about the role or uh, uh, like perspective that you want it to take. So here, uh, uh, like you are saying, you are a design, a product designer. So the LLM is going to be acting as a product designer, right? And it, uh, it's going to be specializing in sustainable customer code. So here, after this, if you ask it anything about designing product that's related to sustainable, uh, like sustainable uh, customer goods is going to be giving you a very, very different or better and better response uh, that, than the one yeah, that you can get uh, from just asking it bluntly. So setting the context is going to help you uh, very much. So, um, and the next one is use sequential prompting. Uh, so this is just building on the previous interaction to refine the response. So we have seen it how we have seen how we can do it earlier with refining the output. Uh, here, for example, for the first one, I'm asking it to list the features of a water a smart water bottle, and then I'm asking it which of these features are most important for health conscious consumers. So the first one is going to give me a more generic response. The second one is going to be uh, narrowing it down to uh, health conscious consumers specifically. And the last one is uh, experiment in activity. So try different paraphrases to achieve the desired output. So uh, just try with different, just go with different uh, prompts and prompting the slides until you get the desired output. Yeah. So before we go on to the next slide on or the next uh, chapter, uh, are there any questions, guys? Or is everything clear? Uh, just to check up on you guys. Okay, now the file. Uh, anyone else? Uh, are, are there any uh, questions? Or is everything clear? Um, okay. Okay. Um, if there is any question, please make sure to uh, just raise your hand or speak up. Uh, okay. Uh, let's 
just overdue some of the LLM tools that uh, you're going to be using this week. So, of course, we have been uh, seeing how to use it, uh, just uh, seeing a couple of demos by using chat GPT. So we have already seen that. So it's uh, an AI language model or a large, large uh, LLM, which is a large language model that's going to generate human-like text. So we can use it for drafting content, answering questions, and brainstorming ideas. So this is just the basic uh, use case of, so it's not limited for to this one, but this is more of a generic use case for ChatGPT and for Gemini. Uh, it's from Google, uh, so it's going to be uh, like an AI assist that helps you with various tasks. Uh, it's used for information retrieval and task attributions. So uh, I have provided, I have also provided the link to Gemini, so you can use it and uh, like uh, if you do not log in into your Google account, it's going to ask you to log in and then you can just start uh, Chatting with it, so uh, I cannot use it with this account, but uh, maybe just change it uh, to my personal account. Uh, okay. I actually want to go to this one. So um, uh, now I think I can change it. Okay, uh, let me just. Okay, why well, it's coming back here? Okay, then we we'll just continue with this one. I think it's better. Um, let me share my whole screen. Okay. Uh, let me just change uh, the user. Okay. So here, I think it's going to work. Yeah, so here you, you can see after you log in, you're going to be uh, able to access uh, your like. Yeah, okay. I just wanted, so this is the organizational uh, email, so it's not allowed. That, that's why uh, it was blocking. Okay, uh, let's continue with. Uh, this window. Okay. Uh, and moving on, 
uh, we can see my Microsoft Bing charts. Uh, so here you can use your Microsoft account to log in into uh, the Microsoft uh, Copilot. Then it has a free tier, so you can use it before without even logging in. So here you can see you will be pumped, or you you will be uh, you will see this uh, page when you click on the link that I provided, and you can use it uh, as well. So of course you can also sign in, but when you sign in, it's going to ask you for your uh, Microsoft account. And lastly, we have already seen uh, the notebook LM. Uh, I have also included the link for you if you want to try it. So uh, Microsoft Bing Chat is more of an AI chatbot integrated into Bing search engine. So it provides uh, web-based information and assists with uh, queries using up-to-date data. So it has the ability to uh, roam the internet, so it's, it has more or less um, an updated data. But recently, ChatGPT and others has also have also integrated uh, web search into their LLM, so they do have uh, an updated data. But prior to recent times, like prior to them adding uh, web searching ability to their LLMs, they were really limited to uh, the data that they were trained on. So. If, so previously, ChatGPT was trained on a data up to 2021. So if you were on 2022 and you ask it something that happened recently, it's not going to be able to answer it. But now, since it has uh, like a way of searching ability, it's can do that. Yeah. So, okay, we have seen these tools and uh, more, but how is this? different from uh, the normal uh, Google search. So we need to understand that the Google search, the normal Google search that we have been using uh, for a long time is just primarily focusing on retrieving the data or retrieving or fo focusing. Uh, it's more focused on providing links to web pages. So it's not like it's not going to summarize, of course, now since uh, like uh, Gemini is already integrated into Google, it will summarize some uh, some of the points if uh, if if it's able to. But primarily, Google search is uh, like uh, focused on uh, providing links to web pages rather than generating direct human life response uh, with a wide range of data that you can find from LLMs. So LLMs be join uh, direct human like response based on the wide uh, range of data that they have been trained on. So some basic or uh, some of the major different like differences between uh, the Google search and the LLM tool are for the Google search, it retrieves relevant links from the link and it's going to uh, display it. It prioritizes contents based on SEO, which is search engine optimization, popularity and freshness. Uh, uh, it requires the user to go through the links, click on them, and scan multiple resources, which, which takes a lot of time. But it's good for finding most up-to-date and highly specific resources. So you have more or less control over uh, which resources you can use when it comes to uh, the Google search. But when you come to LLMs or uh, AI tools, it provides a direct com commercial answer. Uh, it's more or less a human-like response. Uh, it's trained on a vast data set, which includes uh, books, articles, websites, uh, and so on. Uh, it needs, uh, it doesn't need uh, for the user to sniff through the multiple resources, the output is generated. Uh, it's supposed to ask the input query or the prompt. So a query is sometimes called the prompt. So it's very it's like it's very good or excellent for summarizing uh, complex topics, drafting the content, and providing uh, personalized assistance. So here you have, uh, like I would say, much more, a bit less control over which resources to use, but you do have on the positive side, you do have. Uh, uh, like you save a lot of time with energy uh, just to find a specific thing. 
So the key difference between the two is uh, Google search is focused on information retrieval and LLMs uh, such as ChatGPT is focused on uh, knowledge generation. So uh, the primary focus of Google search is to retrieve information, uh, showing a ranked list of uh, web pages that contain the information that you need. So of course, Google search is still a very powerful tool, uh, but uh, the use case is very different. Right? So you are responsible for selecting and verifying the content. So it's not going to verify. So yeah, as you know, uh, on the internet, you'll find both uh, true things and untrue things or lies, right? So verifying between the two is up to you. It's just going to uh, provide the links for the page uh, based on the, like, as we have said, based on the search engine optimization, popularity, and freshness. So going through these pages and selecting the one that's uh, more re relevant and verifying the content is already up to you. So for instance, if you search for best smart water bottles, it's just going to uh, provide you a list of web websites, uh, reviews, articles from which you can pick and read. But when you come to ChatGPT or LLMs, it works. Uh, it's more of a knowledge generation. So it generates knowledge based on what it has learned uh, during its training. So it's it's trained on a lot of uh, parameters, uh, billions of parameters. So uh, it creates a response to specific prompts uh, in a natural language. So na natural na uh, language is basically what uh, me and you guys use, right? So it offers answers to the context question in the way that's uh, easy to understand. So if you ask ChatGPT what are the best features of smart water bottles, it will generate the response directly listing uh, the features that we have seen earlier. Okay. Uh, yeah. Before we uh, sorry, before we move on to defining uh, product features by using AI tools. Uh, is everything clear, guys? Now, um, I think it's better if we uh, make it a conversation more than just one person speaking. Uh, so is it clear or is there any questions? What did you understand and what did you miss? Uh, which part do you want me to go through again? Uh, you can just say the word and we, we can uh, go through it again. Or is it clear? Um, okay. If it's clear, you can show me some thumbs up and uh, we can continue. Or if it's not clear, you can just uh, ask questions. Or of course, you can. Uh, we can go through. Like we can go back to a specific slide and uh, repeat it if if you missed anything. So it's okay, uh, we have time. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, if you are speaking, you are on mute. Or was that a mistake, uh, Brahan? Uh, okay yes uh, now i'm roller yes yes, okay. yes thank you uh maybe i joined late they almost 10 minutes before uh i i did not understand uh, some uh, uh powerpoint uh, parts uh due to uh, actually it is uh, due to uh, time only uh, possibly uh, if uh, we have a time uh, just some others are also joining uh, only uh, if you can uh, better if you refill, uh, reshuffle some parts yeah yeah uh, so what i was thinking was um, so we only are left with a couple of things here so uh, let's go through uh, the rest of the slide and we can uh, go back to the first slide and uh, just have a revise it uh, a conversation and a more of a Q and A, uh, and we can revise to uh, like uh, from the start. Um, so, how does that sound? 
Okay, thank you. Good. Good. Uh, thank you for your, your comment. Anyone else? Any questions or any suggestions? Um, okay, uh, let's continue. Okay, so uh, let's go to the topic of defining product features by using AI tools or LMS. Uh, so identifying, you can use AI tools to identify the customer needs, uh, use AI to analyze what features the customers value most and which features the customers hate. Uh, and you can analyze the competitors, uh, like you can use AI to summarize the features that exist in uh, products that already that's already in the market uh, and identify the gaps, the gaps by identifying what the customers hate from the like the, from the existing products in the market and you can ask it to prioritize features uh, like de determine which features offer the most value for your target audience so that you can know which features you can or you have to yeah yes oh uh you can see it um PPT is not visible. It's not visible. Yeah. It's yeah. Now no, good. Okay. Uh, so I was just saying you can use uh, AI to identify the customer need. What does the customer need? You can use AI to identify uh, or analyze what the customers value the most uh, from the features that are um, that are already existing in the products. Analyze the competitors. You can use AI to summarize the features of existing products and identify gaps that the current mar market is not feeling. Uh, prioritize the features. Uh, so here you can, uh, this is very important to so strategize, uh, determine which features uh, offer the most value for your target audience and decide to focus on those uh, features. So here we have our, actually a demo by using ChatGPT. Uh, so uh, define the uh, product features by using ChatGPT. So AI tools like, uh, of course, LLMs uh, such, such as ChatGPT can help define uh, product features by analyzing the customer needs, uh, summarizing computer reviews, and writing the most valuable developments. So let's see the demo or the example here. So here I want to. Uh, see or uh, build a uh, product specification for a smart water bottle. So here, the first thing I'm going to ask it is, uh, what are the most common uh, complaints about uh, the current smart water bottle? So here, I'm analyzing my competitors, right? So my competitors uh, already have been work working with that, but I want to know which of which com which are the most common complaints uh, that the customer have uh, on these uh, current water bottles or smart water bottles. So high uh, price, low battery life, limited connectivity, uh, functionality, and so on, right, size, and so on. So which features are pressed uh, in the customer? So here I'm asking it, uh, actually I'm asking it uh, which features uh, like I'm uh, analyzing the customer needs or which features uh, does the customer love, right? So uh, it's going to give me a list of features that the customer love or like from the smart water bottles that are already in the market. So hydration tracking, uh, reminders and notifications, integration with apps, seek, uh, sleek design, maybe the indicators and so on. So, I already know what not to do here and what to do here, right? So here I can ask it based on this pretty prioritized list of features uh, for its new smart feature. So here it's going to give me a list of features that I can include in my product specification when building a new smart water bottle. So here, like uh, as I already said, here I know what to do. Uh, what to do and what not to do and here it's going to give me a priority based on their rating right so the first priority i have to uh, look for is uh, hydration tracking 
uh, the second one is uh, reminders and notification integration with mobile apps and the integrated students required key material and so on and so on. So here, if I want to build my product specifically for athletes, I'm going to ask it which what features would appeal the most uh, to athletes using smart products. So here is just more of a generic of the prioritized uh, features of a smart water portal, but here I'm specifying it to athletes, right? So for athletes, uh, high like hydration tracking with performance metrics, customizable hydration goals, temperature control, hydrolytes uh, reminders, lightweight and durable design, and so on. So these are most what are most important features for athletes. I can also go further and ask it to draft a short promotional uh, message for a feed focused smart water program. So here it's just a slang, or this is the, like the message that goes across stay hydrated, stay hydrated. So uh, stay hydrated is there because I'm, the promotion is focused on uh, fitness uh, people, right? Uh, so here it's going to increase the ultimate field fitness uh, companion, your Hydro Pro Smart Bottle, so it's already uh, like decided or uh, like identified the name Hydro Pro, but of course you can change that, but this is more, more of a draft for uh, like the promotional message for your uh, new uh, water bottle that's made for uh, the fitness focus smart water bottle. So, you can use ChatGPT and, of course, other alien links uh, in order to draft or you know to create your sorry uh, your uh, product features. So the key takeaway from this could be uh, ChatGPT and other alien links can analyze feedbacks and reviews to help you prioritize and define product uh, features based on customer preference. So. That's exactly what we did, right? So here we have identified what not to do uh, by uh, lo looking at the most common complaints uh, about the current smart water bottles. And here we have identified which are the best well, uh, like, uh, features of the smart, like, like the currently available uh, smart water bottles. And from the two, we have uh, created a prioritized list of the features for a new uh, smart water bottle and from that we have created uh, like feature that would appeal most to athletes using smart water bottles and of course we have already uh, also created uh, a draft of uh, promotional message for these people so you can use ai and uh, like llms to do this so the best the best practices uh, in using AI for uh, product development could be start with a clear objective. So you need to know, uh, you need to define your goal uh, uh, of what you want uh, and what uh, to you want to achieve with the AI assistance. So to, uh, starting with a clear objective is going to help you start on the right track uh, using specific and detailed code. So the more, like we have said, said this earlier, actually, the more precise and clear your prompt is, the more accurate uh, the AI's response is going to be. And use iterative refinement. So here, uh, like from the example, you, you can see how we used uh, iterative refinement. So here, it's just, uh, it was just a prioritized list of features for a new smart water bottle by analyzing what not to do and what to do. But then, with iterative uh, prompting, I I managed to uh, bring it down to specifically athletes, right? So this is what we mean by iterative requirement, and com uh, combine AI insights with uh, human expertise. So you can use the AI suggestion as a foundation, and then apply your human judgment and creativity. So they are not perfect, so uh, you do need to review them before moving forward with the response. And of course, validate the information. So you need to cross check AI uh, joint data with trusted sources and accuracy for accuracy. So the first thing that you will see, uh, let's say, when you log into ChatGPT, is uh, 
ChatGPT can make mistakes or check important information. So they too advise you to uh, validate the information that you get from uh, the LLM. So all of them are uh, pretty much the same. So you need to validate the information that you get from uh, AIs or LLMs. Uh, and how can AI assist? So as we have seen, AI could assist in data uh, uh, gathering, uh, quick, uh, quickly compiles the market statistics and reports. Uh, it can do uh, it can do trained analysis uh, by identifying uh, emerging market trends and customer preferences and customer insights. So by analyzing feedbacks and reviews to, to gauge satisfaction. So, uh, like example prompts could be summarize the latest trend. Uh, so this is more or less uh, related to this week's project. Summarize the latest trend in uh, the global smart trend. So this is going to analyze the trend. Uh, first is going to gather the data, and then it's going to analyze the trend, right? And then uh, provide the insight to you. And what features are more desired by fitness enthusiasts? in wearable uh, devices so, so uh, after that of course we need to look at market research and how uh, ai using ai is going to be is going to help you in this so the challenge in the traditional way of uh, market research is time consumption so collecting the data and analyzing the data could take weeks if not months uh to do so it takes a lot of data it, it takes a lot of time and keeping up with rapidly changing market trends it's a lot harder so you might collect the data now and analyze it in a month but when you come out with your analysis the trends could have already changed so you have to go back to the drawing boards and do that like collect the data again and do the analysis all, all over again uh, and still you could miss the trend so uh, time is of the essence, right? So you need uh, like AI-powered uh, like uh, market research tools help you. Uh, so first, uh, NLP, which is um, uh, natural language processing, it helps you by analyzing large volume of text data for insights. So you can just give it the raw data, and it's going to help you with uh, identifying. Uh, like patterns and uh, gathering the insights. And machine learning algorithms uh, by identifying patterns and uh, by predicting trends, it could help you uh, do your market research or market analysis. And data aggregation, so AI can compile data from multiple resources quickly. So uh, as you have seen, like when you ask uh, the LLM for an information, uh, like if you ask it uh, to provide you the, uh, for instance, if you ask it to provide you with the links to its resource, you can see how much resource it has gone through in such a short period of time. So it's going to compile a lot of data from uh, multiple resources, but in a very quickly uh, time or in a short period of time. So of course, obviously, uh, the benefit is efficiency, so faster data processing, of course, it saves you time, it saves you energy, and it saves you a lot of resources. Uh, Dave's of insights, so it uncovers hidden patterns, and real-time analysis, so it keeps up with the current uh, frames. Okay, the best practices uh, for effectively uh, using AI are specific prompts. Uh, be clear and concise with your uh, prompt to get a detailed uh, and precise answer. Uh, and use multiple resources, uh, so you can use various AI tools uh, to cross verify information. So previously we have seen how different uh, the responses from different AI are even for the same prompt. And iterative refinement, so continuously uh, refine your uh, AI outputs for accuracy. We have seen how to do that as well. And integration into workflows, so you can uh, use collaborate or combine AI insights with team expertise and human uh, oversight. So always, almost always review your work or by generated by AI, by uh, humans. 
and the challenge and limitation of this or LLMs or AI could be information accuracy. Sometimes, of course, AI uh, may occasionally provide outdated or incorrect data. Contextual understanding, so it may like lack uh, some deep understanding or niche industry specifications. So, if you are asking it uh, for a specific thing in your industry, it might not understand it and miss the point and answer something entirely different from what you are lo lo looking for. So, if it does not uh, depend on that specific uh, industry's data, uh, the response is not going to be that good. And over reliance on AI, this is a very, very, very uh, challenge or limitation. So, risk of diminishing human creativity and problem solving skills. So, if you heavily rely on AI, you could lose your creativity. Uh, so, every day, every every time you face challenge or every time you have a question you if you go to and, and, and of course it's good to uh, have the quick response but sometimes you could hear the relation of the human creativity problem solving skill so consideration could be uh, fact checking so always be verifying the air put against a reliable source ethical use so be mindful of the data privacy and data implementations and of course, human judge, judgment. So, yes, AI as a tool, but not as a decision maker. So, as we have said, it could overlook some things uh, or uh, like uh, not understand uh, the industry or have a deeper understanding of the industry. Uh, so, the decision it could uh, offer or it could um, give you could be wrong. So you need to use it as a tool, but not as a decision maker. So here I have included some uh, references that could help you with this. Uh, so make sure to go through them. Um, so yeah, any questions before we just uh, go through it again and revise the whole thing? If there is any questions, let me take a couple of them. Okay. Uh, yeah, Christina, uh, I will do that. And Masai, I think it would be very important if we could, if we uh, know the meeting situation. So, yeah, it's already detailed in the uh, not, not the notion uh, or the schedule that we have already provided you on a Slack or on your email. So you can go to that and uh, look at the start date and uh, like the start time and the end time. Of course, sometimes when we have demos, we could uh, take a bit longer than, than as we did right now. So I believe we are 15 minutes uh, later than the finishing time. But we always start on time and we always announce on the broadcast uh, 10 minutes before we start the session and on the time we start the session. So uh, right now, uh, like before an hour and uh, like 25 minutes, we have announced it and, uh, on the starting time. We have also announced it on the Slack chat. Huh? So make sure to check that and your schedule. Okay, uh, that's good. Um, so, any questions, guys, before we just refresh these slides? Uh, any questions, anything specific that you want to ask? Um, you can ask right now. Yes, Brahan. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for your uh, nice presentation regarding uh, uh, AI uh, enhancing for uh, project management and as a source of uh, research building. I would have uh, uh, almost uh, three related uh, questions. Uh, the first one is about uh, the trust or the efficiency about accuracy of this artificial intelligence based uh, uh, when, uh, uh, as an example, uh, uh, actually we know some truths, general truths, sometimes. When we ask uh, all types, maybe copilot or uh, chat GTP, when we ask uh, some general truths, it may uh, deviate from uh, some general truths. So what about on uh, some scientific issues? We know in the future, uh, this uh, uh, artificial intelligence can even can uh, replace human being mind for the, uh, the approach is this uh, recent future is uh, on that 
how to uh, accurate the efficiency of this AI in terms of parts and pieces. The second one is uh, how uh, sometimes uh, as a researcher or Uh, Brahano, you're picking up. Uh, uh, is it only for me or? Hello, can you guys hear me? Okay, we lost him. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he was uh, raising a very, very uh, interesting topics. Let's wait for him to return. Uh, Brahanu, if you can't hear us, we have lost you. I think it's uh, due to your network. Uh, okay, maybe in the meantime, if there is any other question, let's take a couple of questions and uh, when he returns, we can uh, continue with them. So any other questions, guys? Um, yes, Brahan. Yes, sorry. Uh, I think connection issue. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so, yes. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, we can start uh, for the second question. Okay. My second question is uh, about uh, citation of this AI uh, as or acknowledging as a knowledge source or a reference source is it possible uh, maybe but we all know that as a source or as a reference we all use but it needs uh, uh, maybe a rewriting or um, uh, uh, i think those features or those sources from ai but even if some uh, researchers acknowledge this ai as uh, reference or as acknowledgeable uh, sources so how do you think uh, this in this plagiarism the third question maybe uh, it is uh, uh, about the uh, access of this chat gtp or uh, copilot and some other ai based uh, uh, sources uh, it's maybe uh, limited for uh, some windows regarding its uh, access it may be limited for one uh, some is limited for one uh, month for two months then after it may ask uh, premium level uh, or plus uh, a level of those uh, ai uh, application uh, such as chat gtp or copilot so in order to get this premium uh, level or plus uh, chat gtp it needs uh, uh, some costs or in order to uh, use uh, features. So that's our request one. Thank you. Uh, thank you so, so much uh, for your questions. These are very, very good uh, questions. So, uh, uh, okay, let's, let's start on the first one. So uh, how can we use that, uh, like these LLM tools uh, as a valid uh, source right so the the short answer could be uh so as i have said LLMs such as ChatGPT or gemini and so on already uh, tells us that they make mi mistakes and uh everything they say or everything they do is not co correct right so we have seen that earlier so the thing that you can do is uh, verify the information that you give from LLMs because uh, like the, actually the second question the first question kind of meet here right so LLMs are not uh, knowledge bases so they are not creating something new so they are not at that level yet so they are trained on a large data set and they are following some pattern in order to answer our question so they are already building on something that's already there. But uh, like as you have said, uh, we are waiting for AGI, which is artificial intelligence, uh, in order to do that. So with AGI, we could we could be able to uh, generate new things and create uh, like use it as a knowledge base or any resource. But for now, it's only uh, it's only just uh, 
doing what it's trained to do or based on the data set that it's already have. So even with the data set it's already have, it could make a lot of mistakes because of course, as we have no, uh, not all data that you can find is true. So even uh, for a very, very obvious question, it could miss the point. This is because when it's kind of uh, drawing the patterns and uh, trying to answer the question, they could refer to the wrong data set. But it's, that, that's more complicated now. But the, basically, we cannot use AI or LLM uh, like, uh, or we cannot expect an LLM and AI to be uh, always true, and we cannot really use it uh, as a knowledge bit yet, or at least yet. Of course, it's very, very much improving. So if you have seen uh, with uh, ChatGPT, it has released a new, uh, a new version or a new mo model called uh, O1 uh, Preview and O1 Mini. So believe it or not, uh, the previous versions of ChatGPT could not even answer the question how many R's are in strawberry, right? So it cannot even count the number of R's that are found in a strawberry. So it always answers two or four or so something like that. But only with the new uh, model, which is more advanced than the previous ones, it could answer this uh, equation. So it 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 misses uh, something so silly as this one that it could answer something as that's much much more complex uh, than uh, like uh, like complex that we cannot even imagine so this is due due to they are not uh, like this is due due to the data that they are uh, trained on and so on and there are a lot of factors but we always always need to verify the information that we get from AI. so uh, the first question is, they always make, the, uh, my answer for your first question is, we cannot uh, always take the response that we get from LLMs uh, uh, to be true and uh, you use it as a uh, knowledge source. And for your second question, uh, like uh, as much as far as I know, and uh, like uh, I'm, I'm also in, in the academic world, so like using LLMs or AIs uh, to do your research and to use them as a knowledge source is not uh, is not uh, permitted, actually. So there are tools that detect uh, AI written content, and you will get uh, you will be penalized uh, for plagiarism if it is found. So it's as I have said, it's not a knowledge source yet. It's not going to create something new out of the air, out of thin air. Uh, it's not able to think, so it's not being used as a knowledge source. And even if, even uh, the like uh, universities and so, and other things will check uh, for your research paper and others uh, for AI written. Content and if it's found, you might be penalized for, for that one. But what I would recommend and what I also do uh, when writing research papers and uh, search thing is use AI in order to help me generate this uh, like uh, reviews or something. So you can use AI to help you as a tool, but not to write your whole research paper. So that's that's what not uh, like accepted by universities or others. So you can use AI in order to help you with generating uh, like uh, ideas or structures or literature reviews, but you have to do it to do the work yourself. So uh, as like, I don't know if anything changed uh, recently, but as, as of my knowledge, it's not uh, permitted. And for your last question, so, uh, like LLMs such as ChatGPT and Gemini and others have two uh, two offers, right? So it, they are more of a freemium or so sorry a premium um, uh, kind of. Uh, so you have a free tier and you have the premium uh, subscription. So you can use the the free tier or the free. Uh, the free account or the free 
the free ID links or the free modules as much as you can. They will not ask you for uh, to pay with an amount or so, but they have put limitations, a lot of limitations uh, on those modules. So, uh, but I think I have used uh, ChatGPT. Uh, like th this is the premium uh, version. So if you see, it's not Plus or the the, pre the premium account. So here. Um, I cannot choose a model, right? So here I cannot choose a model. Uh, so that's the limitation there. So uh, when I talk about uh, uploading a file, so uh, you can upload files into ChatGPT and others, right? But for ChatGPT, it's already limited to three files per day. So you cannot attach more than three files per day. Okay. And you cannot use you cannot choose the model that you want to use, and you cannot change the model uh, easily. But of course, you you, you can do that. Um, uh, about let's uh, cars. <laughs> so. I will show you, I actually have a free a premium account as well, but on other accounts, so I will show you the difference. So here you can, of course, change the model, but it's already li limited to 4.0 and 4.0 mini. And the 4.0 is actually limited to like, uh, I'm not sure, but I, I think 10 or 15 per day. So like 10 or 15 pages per day. So if you will pass that limit, it's going to change it to uh, for all mini, and you can use that one. So of course, with uh, going down uh, like uh, version, there is a reasoning and the response is also not as good. So that's what different. Of course, when you come to uh, the premium account, it's very different. If you like, I can actually show you. Um, okay, so here, if you can see, th this is the premium account. So here on the premium account, you can choose uh, the module that you want to use. So here you have the four, the four O mini, the one O mini, uh, sorry, O one mini and O one previews. These are the newest uh, modules. These are the best. Uh, performing model so uh, i believe for the o1 preview uh, it's also limited to the premium account so i only can uh, have 30 queries per week and for the mini i can only have 50 queries per week and here is just an integration of 4 always canva so with this model you can uh, edit with alongside with the ai and here uh, you have the four so the 4.0 and the 4.0 mini is what's found in the uh, the freemium market. So that's what's different, but you can still, still use the free account as much as you can. I have as much as you want, but also, as I've said, the, there are some limitations there, of course. Um, of course, they have to make money, so they will uh, like do this kind of things in order to push it to buy it. So here on the premium account, there is no restriction to the amount of files you have, you want to upload, but on the free account, it's already limited to three per day. And, and so, so these are the kind of limitations that you can find, but it's not, uh, you're not going to be asked to use it as much as well, of course. So did I answer your question? I think it was a bit long answer. Uh, but I just wanted to clear things out. Yeah, good. Thank you for your uh, deep clarification. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, uh, are there any other questions, guys? Before we just uh, go over the slides and uh, one, one more time, or shall we continue? Okay. Maybe there are no questions, so let's uh, just go through it, uh, just a highlight over the 
this thing. So we started with what AI and what AI copilots are. So AI and LLMs, we are using them interchangeably. So AI is a very, very wide topic, but LLMs are large language models, which are uh, models that are trained on a large uh, data set. And uh, basically we use them to do a lot of things such as learning, reasoning, problem serving, and uh, presentation, and language understanding. So uh, LLMs are a much more specific field of AI. So for now, we're going to be using LLMs more often. So we can refer AI uh, as LLMs. So AI copilots are AI powered assistant that enhance productivity. Uh, it helps us to automate tasks, provide insights, and enhance productivity. So a perfect example of a copilot is uh, GitHub Copilot. So GitHub, uh, GitHub Copilot is used to help us with code. So you can uh, use it to uh, like your like to write unit tests, to understand the code, to write a code, and so on. So it's not the uh, the possibilities are endless. So you can do a lot of things with Copilot, but it's specifically built to help you with your coding tasks. So it's not good with summarizing or doing uh, those things that you normally do with ChatGPT and uh, Gemini and so on. And not Google LLM, LLM is uh, just a model that's provided, that's built on top of Gemini 1.5. Uh, so it's just used, it's basically just used to uh, go through the resources that you give it and uh, you can ask it questions. So here we provided it with uh, like slides and uh, a website here you can see it from this website and uh, like slides, we, uh, we we can ask it anything. So uh, the slides, or, or sorry, the website was uh, the beginner's guide uh, uh, to alien. So uh, you can ask it anything about it. And, uh, so here, what are the main uh, ethical concerns around the use of alien and how it can be addressed. So here, it's going to answer this by using these references. So it's going to be like it's 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 more of a summarizing tool. Uh, we call this rag actually like it's going to retrieve information from these tools, these uh, websites, and uh, whatever context you provided and answer the question that you have asked. It. So it's basically a rag. Rag is uh, retrieve argument and, uh, generation. So it's going to retrieve information based on your query or your prompt and it's uh, going to generate response. So that's uh, what Notebook LL is. It's, it's built by Google, and it's built on top of uh, Gemini 1.5. So the importance of uh, product specification. So what is product specification? So product specification is a document, a very detailed document that's going to outline the requirements, the features, and the functionalities of your product, right? So uh, why are they so important? So the first thing, the most thing is alignment. So it ensures that each and every stakeholders have a common understanding of what the product is, what the features are going to be included, and what the requirements are, and what the functionality of the product is. And this is going to be, uh, it's going to help with us, or it's going to be serving as a guideline or a roadmap to the developer to the designers and the developers. So the developers and the designers where they are designing or producing or developing the product, they already have a clear roadmap or they already know what uh, they need to focus on, which features, which requirements, which functionalities they need to include in their product. And quality assurance, so it's, it sets a clear expectation of what to deliver, what's expected from us, uh, what the customers are expecting, and what the market is, uh, what the market needs. So we already get this information from our market research. Based on that, we've got to set a clear expectation of what to deliver. And risk mitigation, um, like mitigation uh, so it identifies potential issues early in the development process. So it's going to be a benefit us with clear communication amongst the teams, uh, reduce development errors and misunderstandings, and it's going to facilitate effective uh, 
course of planning can be so savage. So how do we communicate with AI or any other tools uh, such as ChatGPT or Gemini or not what we can do? So we communicate through prompts. So we need to understand what prompts are and how we can uh, use prompts in order to uh, better uh, communicate with the LLMs or the AI. So prompt is the input or question uh, you provide to an AI model to generate the response. So you can consider it as query also. Sometimes it's called query and so it's in that case. So uh, uh, prompt is more detailed. So a prompt is input or the question or what you ask the element to do and is the element is going to use that prompt uh, to generate the response. So there are many types of uh, prompts. The first one is open-ended questions. So I've only, um, I only provided uh, three examples here, but you can, I have provided a detailed resource, so you can go ahead and check those. But the main things, the main are uh, open-ended questions, which increase the detailed response. So here, if you can see this, it's open-ended. It doesn't have any instructions, but uh, explain the benefits of incorporating uh, the, the, the customer uh, product. So it's very generic question, and the response is going to be also very generic. So you can see here how, uh, like, how generic it is, right? And the specific instructions, it's going to direct the AI to perform a task. So here I'm asking it to list only five features of a smart water bottle. So I'm only like specifically instructing it to do something, right? So only five, and I want a list. So I have already defined uh, what I want, how I want it, right? So it's going to give me a list, and it's going to be only five, and it's going to be the features of a smart water bottle. And of course, um, we have the contextual prompts. So here it's just providing the AI or the LLM a, pro, a background for better response. So here I'm giving it a background or a role of a market analyst. So, uh, so it's going to answer as a, a market analyst. So I ask it to draft a product description of a new uh, smart water bottle. So the answer is going to be somehow related to market right? because it's uh, it's having a personal uh, market analyst. So here, the next generation of smart water water. So th this is more or less, uh, if you like, you, you, you can think it's more or less of uh, a marketing uh, like analogy or a marketing word, right? So, so this is because uh, I have given it uh, a marketing analyst person or a role. So, why does prompts matter? So the quality of AI response depends directly depends on how well we communicate our requests through prompts. So we need to be very specific. We need to be clear. We need to be uh, very care, care, careful with our prompts because the response that we get from AI directly depends on this. So clear and specific prompts leads to a more accurate and useful answer from the LLM. So here we have I have included some examples that you can go through so uh, here is just i have provided uh, an example on prompts and how a specific prompt would lead to a more specific uh, like answer or response so here i just asked you to list the top five benefits of uh, increasing renewable energy so it's going to give me a more of uh, the five uh, benefits of renewable energy, but here I only uh, like ask you to give me or to answer in two sentences the advantage of AI in healthcare. So the more specific the prompt is, the more specific the answer is going to be. And here uh, we have seen how the results across different LLMs uh, is different with the even while providing it with the same prompt. So here we have provided uh, what are the features of a smart water bottle. This is the prompt. We have provided this prompt to uh, these three uh, LLMs. So here we have Jonai, uh, we have ChatGPT, and uh, the pre uh, sorry, the sorry, yeah, the uh, model. So they all 
pro provided the different data. So the Gemini is more uh, like is more detailed than the reflex C and the chat GPT responses. So here it has defined the, the features and under that it has defined a detailed uh, like how they do it and uh, what's different from them and uh, how you can use it, right? But for when we come to chat GPT, it's just more of a generic thing. So it doesn't provide specific things or specific responses here. So let's just uh, like give you a highlight of that feature. But when we come to Preplasty, we can see that um, it's more of in the uh, middle. So uh, the Preplasty model is uh, like you can see a model that's in between the Gemini and the ChatGPT model. So it's it gives you more detail than ChatGPT, but less detail or explanation than uh, when compared to Gemini. So the key take takeaway here is uh, as we have seen, the AI system prioritizes different features based on the designing the data that they have been trained on. So testing across different platforms ensures that you get the most comprehensive information. So what are you lo lo uh, looking for and uh, which model best, uh, like best achieves that uh, need or your uh, need? So as we have seen earlier, for this specific example, Gemini is more suitable if you are looking for a more detailed uh, answer, but ChatGPT is more so like uh, more of a generic or not not defining so much of the features or things and uh, the complexity is more of in the between in between. So you if you know what kind of answer you know you want, so you can easily change or go through uh, that specific um, LNA. So follow-up prompts and refining outputs. So by using follow-up prompts, you can uh, help clarify and adjust the output of the LNA. So here I have asked it uh, what are the last, the least, uh, the sorry, the latest smart features of a whatever uh, Diagnostic device and it's going to give me some answers and which of these features are most important for athletes. So this answer was for general, right? So generally for everyone. But here you can see I have a specified to athletes. So I'm refining the output, right? So the output that I'm going to get here is more refined than the previous one and provide a compression of these features for the track the fitness trackers and uh, for smart watches. So it's going to give me a comparison of these things here. So refining and iterating the prompts and refining the outputs is a good way of communicating with AI in order to get uh, like uh, what you need. So it helps to clarify, expand, or narrow the AI. So it's going to help you uh, get the most relevant answer and insights. So using AI or it's for using prompts to control output styles and formats, so you can use uh, the prompts to specify what kind of format you want, the tone, the language, and the format that you wanted. So here I have asked it for a summary of uh, benefits of renewable energy and a bullet point. So it's going to give me a bullet point format, right? So here uh, it's going to give me a bullet form format. And here I have asked it for a letter format. So in, not just a letter format, but a formal letter format. So it's going to give me uh, in a format of a letter or a formal letter. And here I have asked it to uh, translate into Spanish this word, this phrase. So it's going to do that. Uh, so it's, you, you can change uh, even the language and here, you can use it to summarize, uh, like here you, you, you can specify the tone that you want to use. So for different, uh, for different people uh, and for different occasions, you might need to use different tones. So you can choose the, how you want to communicate your answer here. So here you, you're gonna use the casual tone, you, you, you can use the friendly tone, you can use a superior tone or, yeah, or so, right? Um, okay. 
Okay, uh, here, so we have seen that. So by specifying the format, tone or language, you can tailor the AI's output to suit your specific need, whether you need to be, you need it to be format or documentation or casual communication. So uh, the best practices for effective AI com communication or interaction could be clear and specific, uh, being clear and specific. So you need to provide detailed instruction to get the precise answer. So instead of just saying, tell, tell me about what about bottles, you can ask specifically to what you need. So here, what are the latest smart features uh, in eco-friendly water bottles? So this is going to give you a more and more specific answer than the first one. And the second one, which I do really do recommend, like, recommend you to do or to try is setting a context so you can get the AI role or perspective that you want to take. So earlier we have seen uh, it take uh, the like the market analyst role. But here we are, you are give, give it the product designer uh, who specializes in uh, sustainable customer goods. So uh, like. For the question you ask it after getting it, it's all is going to contain or it's going to ask you to be that uh, person and it's going to answer according to So the best, uh, so the, the, this is just the continuation of that one. So use sequential prompting. So this is the attractive response, prompting or uh, refinement, refining the output. Uh, we have seen it earlier and experiment and iterate as much as you need. So try different paraphrases, uh, like phrasing, uh, try to change the design of it. So we have seen uh, just an uh, overview of million names and what are the best uses or the, the, the specific we cannot actually this is this is just a, like more of a generic use case for this but they are not limited to this so you have seen ChatGPT, we have seen, uh, Gemini here which is uh, just go the uh, Google's mo model uh, you can use the link in order to start uh, your uh, chat so it's somewhere here yeah so here you can use it um, and of course, Microsoft being chat. So here you can now you, you actually don't need to sign in to get started. You can use this in order to uh, create image or so, uh, do whatever you want. But it's more uh, it's more uh, used for providing web based information. It assists you with uh, queries using up to date data. So since it's already integrated into the web has uh, more or less updated uh, data. And note, notebook mm -hmm. AI, which we have uh, seen earlier, is a, an AI powered notebook that helps you summarize and uh, synthesize information from the different and web sources you are pro providing. So how are these LLMs and uh, AI tools different from Google search? So, so primarily, Google, the Google search is for retrieving information, but uh, for the LLM, they are used for joint knowledge, right? So LLM or uh, so generally like Google search retrieves a relevant link from the web and prioritizes this content based on SEO, which is search engine optimization, popularity, and freshness. And requires the users to go through these links, uh, click on them, and scan multiple resources to get the uh, information that you need. Um, so it's good for finding most uh, like up-to-date data uh, and highly specific resources. So the user have somehow uh, power over uh, which resources to use in case of Google search. But for the LLM, it provides a direct competition answer. So it's more or less the human-like uh, response and is trained on vast uh, data sets, which include books, articles, websites. So uh, the user does not need to go through multiple resources to get the output that they need. So it's excellent for summarizing complex topics, crafting content, and providing personalized uh, answers. So this is just on top of that one. Uh, so defining uh, product features by using AI, how can you use it? 
So you can use AI at you know, the target by what the customers need. Uh, you can use AI to analyze your competitors, and you can use AI to prioritize the features. So here we have actually a demo, of, uh, just a short demo of how we can use AI in order to build our product specification. So I started with what are the most common complaints about the current smart web proposals. So here I have uh, like you can co consider this as uh, computers analyzing the computers. So I, know I, I already have an idea of what not to do or what not to include in my web bottle. And here I ask it to uh, which features are praised in customer reviews. So here I have an idea of what to do or what the customers like. And here I just asked the NLM to prioritize the, these features uh, by the ring, right? Or uh, so here I have already uh, like the like the features in a rack. And here I can actually ask uh, which of these features are most appealing or most important for athletes. So here it will. Uh, redo the features and uh, give me the most important features for athletes. And here, I just uh, short promotion that message for the athletes, which uh, uh, focusing on uh, fitness, uh, focus smart. So th this is the promotion. So stay like the slogan is stay hydrated, uh, stay hydrated. So you can use AM for this. AI for this. So the best practices uh, for using AI for this product development is uh, starting with clear objective. You need to be clear with your goals, specify your goals that you need to achieve by using AI, and using specify uh, by uh, using a specific and detailed prompt attributive requirement as we have done in the example and combining uh, AI insights with human expertise. So AI does make a lot of mistakes. So you need to review it and uh, have a human uh, interloop. And by this uh, information, this is uh, somehow similar with the earlier one. So you need to cross-check the uh, uh, like the response that AI give you with a straight, uh, like a trusted, uh, trusted resource or source for accuracy. So how does AI assist? So uh, the first thing, the most thing is by gathering data. So it's too quick uh, to compile market statistics and reports, uh, trend analysis. So it's it can easily uh, go through the data that it has gathered and identify. Uh, like frame just in the market and uh, kind of what the customer prefers and uh, get the customer insights. So by analyzing this trend, it can uh, give you feedback and review the gauge the uh, satisfaction. So how can you use AI for market research? So uh, try like the traditional way of market research tool, what we used to do is uh, very time consuming, uh, especially the data collection and analysis part. So while keeping it, this makes it hard to keep up with uh, rapidly changing market trends. So as we have provided, uh, as we have said in the previous example, so uh, like uh, it might take weeks or months, uh, like just to gather the data and to analyze them. So by the time you are done with analyzing the data, uh, the trend could, could be already gone. And you have to do this uh, process again. You have to do to process the data, and you have to do analysis again in order to catch up with the new trend. So uh, that's going to be time consuming, of course, and uh, resource uh, like not using efficient resources. But the AI powered mar market research tools uh, you can use, so uh, like natural NLP, which is uh, natural language processing. So it's AIs or LLMs has the ability to analyze large volume of text data and sniff through insights. And with the machine learning algorithm, they can identify patterns and predict trends in them. And for the data aggregation, it can use uh, these AI can use, uh, can bomb by data from multiple, many, many uh, sources very quickly and providing these insights. So efficiency, depth of insights, and uh, 
for me to have uh, since our the niche or the best uh, features of UDI. So the best practices for using AI uh, in, uh, in market research are effective use of AI, so being specific user prompts, uh, multiple resources, and activity three requirements. So continuous refinement of AI, of course, for accuracy. And you need to integrate them into your workflow, so use them to combine the insight that you got from the AI with the team's expertise and uh, human oversight. So, uh, make sure to always review what's generated by AI before using it for ma making decisions. So the challenge and li limitations include, of course, information accuracy. So AI and like LLMs uh, many times make mistakes and provide outdated and incorrect data. So that's the major li limitation of AI. Uh, contextual understanding, so AI may lack uh, understanding or having a deeper understanding of the niche industry specification. So, um, so we do have some terms in different uh, industries, right? So uh, we use the same term in, uh, let's say, uh, physics and chemistry. It's the same term, but it has different meaning. So if you, you let's say, you are trying to get to uh, the physics side, but it's could uh, respond with the chem chemistry side. So that's one example. But uh, it depends on the type of data it's trained on. So it's not if it is not trained on your specific industry niche and knowledge, it could miss uh, the idea or it could miss the whole uh, like idea that you have or you want to be answered. And over reliance or AI is just the risk of diminishing human creativity and problems for being skilled by using or by being overly relied on AI. So consideration could be fact checking, ethical use and uh, human judgment. So which is basically using AI as a tool, but not as a decision maker. So don't let it decide uh, about uh, like what you have given it, but use it as a tool in order to get insights. Yeah, so yeah, you have I, have, I have included some resources here, so you can check them. Uh, yeah, that's it from my side. Um, I hope everything is clear now, guys. Uh, is there any questions? Or anything that's not clear, we can go through that again. Or is it clear? Can we wrap up the session? Uh, you can show me some thumbs up if it's clear. Okay, thank you, uh, doctor. Uh, one more. Okay, thank you, Nina. Okay, I think uh, we can end the session if there is no question. Going once, going twice. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for joining the session. Let me just start the recording. Uh,